OM-1 is a great video camera, but it needs to be rigged like many other hybrid cameras. It needs to be rigged too. In this video I'm going to talk about the new small rig cage for OM-1 and give you a few tips about video shooting with OM-1. Hi, it's Peter here and let's get right into the business. We have to start with the disclaimer first. This cage was sent to me from small rig, but they did not ask me to do any video about it. But I wanted to do because I've been using it almost every day for the month or two that I've had it. It's great addition to OM-1 gear. And I do have affiliate links in the description. And if you watch the whole video, you will find out that there will be a discount code too. But let's get started with the features. And after the features, I will give those tips to you. Well, does a cage have features? Well, it does. And the best new thing in this particular cage is that it is Arca Swiss compatible. That's the first thing. It's a really, really helpful thing. When I, if I have the cage on, like I have it all, always on my OM-1, which this one is dedicated to video, and the one that I'm shooting this with is dedicated to photography, usually. But now it acts as a video camera. So I have never have to worry about if I have the small plate with me. It's always with me because it's Arca Swiss compatible. The previous cage that was for EM-1, Mark II and Mark III, that did not have the Arca Swiss compatibility. So I needed to have an extra plate for that too. But of course, if you need to use Manfrotto, for example, you can screw that plate under that too, of course. There are some screws for that. And then it will give you some extra grip too. I have the extra grip on it, which will or is attached to the top of the camera and it will help you or help you or help me to hold the camera the way I need to hold it. And it's it's really really helpful. And of course it has screws all around. It has a cold shoe mount where you can attach microphones or any other things. With the extra grip I can have the LSP5 here or some other microphone and I use an external monitor because the small screen it's all right from a big screen I do have more control over the exposure or the information about the exposure is a lot bigger than it is natively with OM-1. That is the small thing that I think they should improve and include a bit more information about the exposure for video. Another thing is better design. I can have this on this camera all the time. Like I said, I got two, two OM ones. The one that I'm using now is usually for uh, photography. Now it's acts as a video camera. And then I have this particular body is for video. And then I have this big, uh, cage on all the time because the design is a lot, lot better. I can hold it a lot easier. The, the one that I was using with EM1 and uh, EM1 Mark II and Mark III was a bit um, thicker so it was harder to use when using when doing photography but this one I can have it always on so the design is so much better and let's see and yeah then there are some small details of course you attach it with the with the screw to the bottom of the camera to the tripod mount and then there is a small screwdriver that you can screw it on with and it holds right under the cage so it's always with you. It's, you know, there's a small magnet that holds it. And then other things that I use when I shoot video, of course, cause an ND filter and I use the magnetic H and Y because then I can use the magnetic lens hood. Sometimes instead of this monitor, I do have a external recorder there. I do have the Atomos Ninja 5. Then I can use ProRes 422, which is even better than the Kodak H25 10 bit. Then the video tips and tricks. The first thing is I can use OM-1 and green screen if I need to. It's so much better to key out the green with H.265 10-bit than it was with H.264, which was almost impossible. Usually you need 422 to get a really good green screen, but with 420 and H.265 and 10-bit, it can be done really nicely. No problem with that. Tip number two, level of switch to switch between photo mode and video mode. One thing that I really need to do quite a bit is to make some photographs and some video at the same time. Not only when I'm using the, making these videos, but also for clients. Because 
you know, it's cost effective for the clients when I can do them both. And it's also a very good gig for me because I can charge from, for both. And, but still, the cost for the clients is less than uh, hiring two different, uh, you know, videographer and a photographer separately. So these hybrid gigs that I have every now and then, the level of switch is the thing that I use a lot. I've said it so that at, when it's at uh, position one, it's photo mode and then position two, it's video mode. And what's great about it is that when I switch it to, uh, to video mode, it will switch all the video settings to me. It will have the shutter speed and the aperture that I used previous time that I was uh, using video. So it's really, really good. Just switch it and it will switch to the different modes or the different uh, settings. And that's that's really something that helps me a lot. I think it's one of the best features that there is for video in this camera, OM-1. Good thing that Olympus or OM system, or <laughs> I always keep saying the wrong ones, OM Digital Solutions did that. And as usual, there will be an extra tip after tip number three. And the tip number three is IBIS. The IBIS is stunningly good on OM-1 in I use MS1. It is best for me, at least. I, I find it to be really good. Better than the MS2 or without. Without gives you a really jacky image, but if you use the MS1, it will give you buttery smooth. Movement of the camera is, is really nice. It, it looks really good, and that's why I like to use the MS1. But you have to remember that when you're using the IBIS, there it will be a crop about 2.2 when you shooting video. And then the extra tip, digital teleconverter. Usually I'm not saying that you should use digital teleconverter. It can be used with photos too, but with video it is something that I use quite a bit. And I've programmed it or set it so that it's on the um, exposure compensation button. I just press it and it will make the crop. And what's good about it is that you can see the crop lines so you know beforehand what the crop will be. And that helps a lot. And sometimes it gives you that extra reach. It's really hard to say what the crop factor is or the, when you're using that, but it, it, you, you can see the, the crop from, from the LCD, so it helps a lot. And I think that's something that you should try if you're using OM-1 for video, which you should, because it is very good for that. And then the affiliate links, you can find them in the description down below. And remember, if you buy something, you don't pay any extra, I get a small commission so it's a win-win situation. You get a good gear and I get a small commission. You know, the customizability of the camera is really important and you can do it separately for video and separately for photos in, at least in OM-1, which is a really good thing. All the settings, the buttons can be different uh, for video and, and, and for photographs. But hey, thanks for watching and bye for now.